What's going on everybody? My name is Alex Freeberg and in today's video we're going to be starting our basics of SQL series. Now in this series we're going to be going over everything you need just to get started and then in future videos we're going to be going over some intermediate concepts and some more advanced concepts and then in the final series we're going to be going over some portfolio projects. So to download SQL Server Management Studio, we actually have to download two things. And I have both links right here. And I'm going to leave those in the descriptions so that you guys have those. But this one is to actually download SQL Server Management Studio. So let's go down here. I actually deleted it off my computer so I could walk through this with you guys. So we're going to download that. Let's also go over here. This is actually a server. So we have to download a SQL Server. And if you go down right here, there's a free version. Now, I don't need the developer version, I'm just going to download the express version, it's actually smaller. So let's download that as well. Now once this is done running, we're going to open it up and I'll show you what to do next. So it just finished running, let's click on it. Alright, so we need to install it. We're going to click yes and this is going to take a little while. So this popped up, I clicked install, and it's been running for the past couple of minutes. Apparently I was not recording, so I apologize for that, but that's all I did. So now it's been installed, I'm actually going to pull it up right here. And let's open it up. Now when it pulls up, it's going to ask you to connect to a server, and that's why we downloaded the SQL Express server. So let's connect to that. And there you go. It's as easy as that. So now we have SQL Server Management Studio set up and we are good to go. So the first thing that we need to do is actually create a database. So let's go over here to databases and let's click new database. And let's just do SQL tutorial. Keep it simple. And if we click that, it's going to create our database for us. Now, when you open up the database, there's going to be a lot of stuff. You really do not need to know all this. Really, what we're going to be sticking to is this tables right here. Uh, as of right now, we do not have any tables, so we need to create tables. Now, there's two ways that you can do that. You can click right here, and you can go to New and Create Table. We're not actually going to do that. We're going to create it using uh, a script or a T-SQL. So we're going to go over here and do New Query and we will get started on cre actually creating uh, the two tables that we're gonna be using for all the stuff going forward. All right, so let's get rid of me because we really don't need to be seeing me anymore. Let's get started by doing our very first table, which is gonna be our employee demographics table. So let's start off by saying create table, and we have to name it. So let's do employee demographics, and enter down, we wanna do an open parenthesis. Now we need to specify what our column names are gonna be, and what the data type is for each column. So let's start off with employee ID, and we want that to be an integer. So that'll be like one, two, three, four, uh, anything numeric. Now we want to do uh, first name. And let's make that varchar 50. If you don't know what these data types are, that's okay. Uh, that will probably be covered in a different video. That's not really necessary for this video. Uh, let's do last name. We'll also make that varchar50. Let's do age. Make that an integer. And very last, let's do gender. And we will make that varchar50 as well. So now we have our very first table. Let's run that. And we'll see if it works. We'll go over here and we'll refresh our tables. And there you go. So we have our very first table. Let's go up here, let's get rid of this one, and now let's create our second table. So we're gonna do basically the exact same thing, but we're gonna have a little bit different information in it. This is gonna be our employee salary table. So let's do create table, and again, we need to name it. And enter and open parentheses. So now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do employee ID. Let's make that an integer. Now we want the job title, because we want to know what they do. And this one is going to be varchar50, because we keep it pretty simple. Whoops. And then for our very last one, we're going to do salary, and that will be integer as well. And I'll just do it here. 
So let's create this table. Let's see if it is there. And there we go. So let's open up one of these tables really quick, see what's in there, see what it looks like. As you can see, we do not have any information in there. Uh, when you create a new table, sometimes when you open it up, you're gonna see this. If you want to get rid of that, you just need to do a, I think it's called a hard refresh or something like that, but you can do Control Shift R. Let's see if it works for me. I just did it. All right, and it goes away. So now it recognizes it as a table. So we're good there. Let's go back here and let's get rid of all this. We've already created our tables. Now we want to insert the data into our tables. So let's see what that looks like. Let's do insert into, and now we need to specify what table we're inserting our data into. So let's start off with employee demographics. Let's do values. So now we have to select what values we're gonna put into, um, into this table. So now we're gonna to have to do the employee ID. So let's do 1001, and then we're gonna do first name. So let's do Jim, last name, Halpert, and then his age, let's say he's 30, and he is a male. Now, just for fun, let's execute that. Let's go back to this table right here and execute. And as you can see, all of our information actually went in there. So now we have his employee ID, his first name, his last name, age, and gender. Now, we need a lot more information uh, for this table in order to actually learn a lot of the concepts of querying the table. So I'm actually gonna go through and add a ton more information. I'm not gonna bore you through that, but I will show you the final product before I actually hit execute. So stick with me. I'm actually just gonna cut to the end where I insert all my stuff down here. And then if you want that, I'll probably leave it in the description or maybe put it in my GitHub or something so that you can easily just go copy and paste that if that's what you wanna do. So I'll see you in a few seconds. All right, so I have all my values right here. I actually am gonna take this one out because I already did that one. But this is our additional information. Let's insert that into our table real quick and go back here and take a look at it. And there you go. This is gonna be our core information that we are querying off of uh, in future videos. So that table is completely finished. Let's go back here. We're going to get rid of this because now we wanna insert our information to our other table. So let's do insert into, and let's do employee, and now we're gonna do salary. So let's do values to specify that we're inserting values into there. And in this one, we have employee ID. So again, let's do 1001, that's Jim. His job title is salesman. And let's say his salary is $45,000 and let's execute that and you can't see it but down here it says it's done let's go to that table and as you can see that is inserted i'm going to do the exact same thing as i did before i am going to fill out all these and in a second it will be done uh, on your side and then I, again i will leave it in the description or i'm going to put it on my github and you guys can just copy and paste that if that's what you want to do or you can write it out whatever you want to do all right, just like before, I'm gonna get rid of this first one. That is Jim, he is already done. Now let's insert this information. It is finished. Let's go back here, and there we go. Let's just get it started by doing select everything, and let's do this from the employee demographics table. So let's execute this. If we wanted to only show the first names, we can just do first name and run that. And if we want first name and last name, we can just separate that by using a comma. And it will return those. But if we want to return all columns and all rows, then all we have to do is use this star. So that's what the star does. Now we have nine rows of data here. And if we only wanted to return, let's say the top five, we can easily do that. And we can just say top five of everything. Now the reason this could be useful is say you have a table that has millions of rows in it and you only want a small sample, you can say select top 1000. And when you do that, it will only select the top five rows. 
Now let's get everything back in here really quick because we're going to move on to this distinct feature. So when we use distinct, we're actually saying that we want the unique values in a specific column. So if we say distinct, and then let's do employee ID, everything should be returned. So all nine rows should be returned. And that's because every single one of these are unique. Now let's try gender. So there's only gonna be two results, the male and the female. And that's because there's only two distinct values in that column. Now let's look at all of our data again. So now we wanna look at count. Now count is very simple. All it is gonna do is gonna show us all the non-null values in a column. So let's look at last name, for example. If we do count of last name, all that's gonna give us is a count of nine because we have nine last names. If for whatever reason somebody's last name was left out and that was null, then it would have returned maybe eight or seven depending on how many were actually in there. So if an entire column was null, we, it would be returned to zero. And if you notice, we are not given a column name. That's because this is derived information based off the last name. So if we want to actually give this a name so that that column does not say no column name, we can use this as right here. So once you put as, you can actually name it. So since this is the count of the last name, we'll write last name count. Keep it simple. And if we execute that, as you can see, we have last name count right there. So that's how you use that as. Let's look at all of our data again. We wanna look at some max, mins, and averages right now. And the only column here where it would be useful to do it on is age. But let's actually go over and let's look at our salary table. And at our salary table, we have some really interesting salaries that I think would be a little bit more useful for this information. So let's go over to employee salary. All right, and let's look at this table really quick. So we have our salary. Now we want to look at the maximum salary that is in uh, that column, and that is gonna be $65,000. Now let's say we wanted to know what the minimum salary was. Let's execute this, and the person who makes the least money is making $36,000. Now what's the average? What is the average salary for all employees? That's gonna be $48,555. So, so super easy to use all of these things. They're extremely useful. I use them every single day. So I know that each of these are very, very useful and are definitely among the basics that you have to know. Let's look real quick at everything really quick. So we just learned the select statement, but learning this from statement really quick is also important. Up here, this actually shows us that we're already hitting off the SQL tutorial database, but let's say we change it to master. When we try to run this, it's gonna give us an error. And that's because now we're hitting off this database and this database does not have this table in it. So in order to do this, in order to still hit off that table while up here, we're actually hitting off a different table, we can change this information. So the from statement, you have to specify three separate things. The first thing that you need to specify is the database. So let's say we wanna hit off the SQL tutorial database. Now we wanna select what table we're gonna do. This is actually a .dbo, so let's put .dbo. There's, there's a lot that can go into that. Um, it's not worth getting into now, but .dbo. And let's do employee salary. When we execute this, our information comes up. Even though up here we're still hitting off the master database, when we specify it right here, then we actually are choosing what database and what table to hit off of, and so it does not matter what it is up here. So that's how you use the from statement. Now what does the where statement do? It helps limit the amount of data and specify what data you want returned. So we have a, quite a few concepts that we're gonna be covering today. Let's just start out with something really easy. Let's do where first name equals Jim. Really simple. So we're selecting everything where our first name equals Jim, and this is our output. So really, really simple. Now let's try where it does not equal. This right here says does not equal Jim. And let's execute that. 
And as you can see, we have everybody except Jim Halpert in there. So now let's look at the greater than or less than. So in this table, I think the one that we're gonna look at is age. So let's look at age and let's do where it's greater than 30. And when we execute that, we're gonna get everyone who is over the age of 30. Now, as you can see, we're not including people who are 30 years old. If we wanna include people who actually are 30 years old, we're gonna add the equal sign right there. So we should be seeing people who are now 30. So before Pam and Jim were not in there and now they are. If we do the exact same thing, let's do less than 32. Here's everyone that's gonna be included, but if we wanna include the people who are 32 year old, then we are just gonna add that equal sign and now the people who are 32 years old, like Toby and Meredith, are now included. If we wanna go even further, we want people who are less than or equal than 32 and who are male, we can say where gender equals male. So now we have two things that we are specifying that we need. We need somebody whose age is less than 32 and we need their gender to be male. So let's execute that. And we have four people who meet that criteria. So that's what the and statement does. If we write or, then only one of these criteria has to be correct in order for it to be met. So if we hit execute, now we're saying anybody who's under the age or equal to 32 or their gender equals male. So if we look down here, Michael Scott is actually 35 years old, so he's over 32, but since he is male, he is now included. Let's get rid of everything really quick. I wanna look at this like really quick. So let's execute just that, and if you do that, you highlight just that and hit execute, then it uh, will only run what you have highlighted. So now let's look at this whole table. Now, when you're using like, you typically are doing this for sometimes numerical, but most of the time you're using it for text information. So if we're looking at this right here, if I'm looking at last names, and let's say I want everybody whose last name starts with S. You can't really do that with anything else. So I'm going to say where it's like, and then I'm gonna say S, and after that, I'm gonna put a percent sign, that's actually called a wild card. And if I close that off, what this is saying is, is I want every last name where it starts with, or where it's like, where it only starts with an S. So let's run this really quick. Now we have two people whose last names start with S. Now, if I put a wild card at the beginning, we are now saying where there's an S anywhere in anybody's name. So let's execute this and see what we get. So now, even if the S is like Flenderson towards the end, it still counts. So you can specify multiple things in here as well. So let's say I want it to start with S that would return Schrute and Scott, but now I want something that also has an O in it. So, so it has an S at the beginning and then somewhere in there, there's an O. Now let's execute that. And there's only one person that meets that criteria. So you can do that for multiple things. You can even say O-T-T -T, and let's execute that. And he's still gonna be returned. And if we put C at the back, it's not gonna be returned because it follows it in order. So it isn't S-O-T-T-C. The C would actually need to go over here. So now we have S C O T T. And although there's a bunch of wild cards in here, it is gonna return Scott. So that is a little bit, a little hint at how you can use like. There is a little bit more that goes into it. You can use it for numerics. Um, there's a lot of things that you can use this for, but this is just the basics, how you can use it today, how you can get started on using the like. In a nutshell, that is how you use like. And as I said before, you can use like with numerical data as well, but for demonstration purposes, I wanted to use text data. Let's get rid of this really quick. Um, let's look at our entire table. And I wanted to show you how to use null and not null. I can't really show you how to use null because I do not have any null fields. I could easily update this table and make one null, but that's, in a future video where it's a little bit more advanced where you can start altering your data. But just for purposes of showing you what null and not null is, let's do where first name is null. 
And if we see that it's not going to return anything, but if we say is not null, it's going to return everything because nothing in here is null. Nothing in this first name column is null. So that's how you use it. Um, there are a lot of use cases where you actually will use null and not null. That will be in future videos, probably in the project section or the portfolio section. But we weren't able to show really how to use this super well, but just as a demonstration, that's really all it does. It looks at the whole column and whether it is null or not null. That's really all it's used for. This is actually super useful and you can use it in a ton of situations. But again, for demonstration purposes, that's really all it does. So let's get rid of this. Let's look at in really quick. So in is kind of like the equal statement, but it's multiple equal statements. So let's say we want to say we're first name equals Jim. And then we were like, wait, we also want to include Michael Scott. So then we would have to write and where first name equals, and then we would do Michael, and then et cetera, et cetera, for anybody that we wanted to include. But if we said in, we could do an open parenthesis, and then we can say Jim, we can say Michael, and we can say as many people as we want going down the road, just separating it by commas, and if we hit execute, everything would be returned. So it really is just a condensed way to say equal for multiple things. So that is the where statement. I think the where statement can get extremely complex, but this really is highlighting the basics. So if you can learn all of these concepts, you will absolutely have the basics down and will be set to go over some more intermediate and more advanced things with the where statement later on. The group by statement is similar to distinct in the select statement in that it's gonna show the unique values in a column. The difference is, is if we say distinct gender, what's going to be returned is the very first unique value of female and the very first unique value of male. But if we say gender and we say group by gender, it's only going to return two values. But in these two values, we actually have all the males rolled up into this one row and all the females rolled up into this one row. Now let me further show you what that means. If I say count of gender, now you can see that this whole time there were six males in this one row and there were three females in this one row. So with the distinct, it really is only showing us what value is in there that's unique. But with the group by, it's showing us what the unique value is, but it's also rolling them all up into one column so that we can use it for other things. Now, real quick, I want to be able to see both of these at the same time. So let's just put this up here and let's run this so we can actually see both. Now, let's add age to this statement down here or this query. And let's only run this one. And I want to show you what happens and why it happens. We're now looking at gender, age, and then the count of gender. So if we look down here, we only have one male who is 29. We have one male who is female, that's age 30, and so on and so forth. So none of these people are both the same gender and the same age. If, for example, we had two or three people who were male and who were 30 years old, then we would have a two or a three over here. So this count is actually being counted at each row that's being returned. So for our data that we have today, this isn't a fantastic example because it really split it out. There were any that were the same, but as you can see, you can put multiple columns as long as you put multiple down here. Now, why did we not have to put this count gender down here in this group by? That's because this count gender is actually a derived field or a derived column. It's derived based off the gender column. So it's technically not a real column that's in the table it's one that we're creating that's fictional, uh, per se. So the age and the gender are actual fields or actual columns that are in our tables. So they have to be down here. And like I said before, it's the comparison to that distinct in the select statement because we're looking at the distinct of gender and age. So we're saying distinct across multiple columns, both gender and age. Now, as we had before, we were only looking at gender 
it's going to roll all of those up into just male and female. But if we want to add more, we can easily add more. In this group by statement, we can still do things like where age is greater than 31. We can still do those things. So let's execute this and our numbers are going to change. Now we're doing it based off gender and we're looking at the count of people whose age is greater than 31, which is smaller than before. Now let's look at order by. I'll do it down here really quick for demonstration, but I am eventually gonna come up here and use it because I think it'll be a little bit better. To completely round out this query down here, let me give this a name. Let's do count of gender. And then let's come down here and let's order by, uh, let's order by count gender. And when we run that, it's gonna do one, three. And that's because as a default, SQL has an ascending feature, which is gonna be smallest to largest going down. If we wanna change that, we can change it to descending. That's gonna be largest to smallest. So now we have three, one. And if we wanna do it based off gender, and we do it descending, now we have Z to A. And so that's gonna be male, female. And if we get rid of that, it's gonna do the default ascending and let's see what that brings. Female, male. Now, for what we're trying to do, let's look at this large table. So I think it's gonna be a little bit more descriptive or a little bit better visually. Let's do order by and let's do age. Let's run this and it's gonna order smallest to largest. If we do descending, it's gonna do largest to smallest. Now you don't only have to do just one thing. You can do multiple columns. So if I wanted to do age and then gender, I can do that as well. So let's do gender and let's run that. So now we have the age, but under the age, we also have it ordered by female and that's in ascending order. So A, B, C, D, F, so females first. So it's gonna be female first and then it's gonna be male. And again, female and male. Now we don't have to just let it be ascending for each one. If I wanted to do it reverse in this column, I can do descending. Now let's run that. And when we have 30, now male is first and female is second. And if I wanted to do that over here, I can do descending. And now we have them both descending. So it's gonna to go top to bottom. And when we have 32, it's gonna be male, 32 female. So you can specify lots of different things in here and we don't actually have to use column names. We could just use numbers. So if I wanted to do one, two, three, four, five, I could. But let's try to replicate the exact same thing before. This would be column one, two, three, four. So let's do where four descending and then let's do five descending. And if we execute that, it's gonna give us the exact same result as if we'd actually put in the column name. And I, I do use this a lot. Oftentimes I don't use the column name. I just, if it's a small table, I'll just use the number. So in my actual queries, I do this a lot where I just use the number instead of the column name. So that is the group by and the order by statement. And if you have walked through my previous videos, you should be completely done with the basics of SQL. So congratulations. The next thing to do is really just practice the basics because the basics are what you're gonna be using day in, day out. And so what I would recommend is create a few more tables, query those tables, try to think of use cases and what you would actually want to know from that information. After that, I would move on to my intermediate videos if those are already out, and then I would move on to my advanced videos. Those are gonna go over some more challenging topics, but things that would be very useful for anybody to know. In my next video, I'm gonna be going over intermediate SQL topics, things like joins and subqueries and a ton more. So if I already have posted those, be sure to go check those out on my page. And if I haven't, I hope to have those up soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it.